I'm Chang Wen with Gotta Be Mobile, and today we're at CTIA 2012 with QNX sitting in a Porsche, taking a look at how the Playbook and the QNX OS integrates into cars and car infotainment systems today. So, can you tell us a little bit about this prototype that you have going on here, Andy? Absolutely. So this is showing a lot of the technology that we're bringing into the mobile space, but in the context of a car. So we've got all the buttons hooked up so we can do things like, you know, provide, um, you know, high definition voice calling. Um, we can do things like showing navigation, do, um, I don't know if we've actually got anybody that will accept a call at this point, but uh, uh, in any case, you know, that we've got this, so we're doing calls with like high definition stereo, so something that you don't, uh, he's, it doesn't sound like he's there, so that's okay, we'll, uh, Before we'll, we go on, um, this isn't a typical um, infotainment setup, is it? It's no, a, it's no, actually it's not. a playbook, right? Uh, this is actually a playbook, but we're using it primarily because it's it's a good, convenient hardware for us to use. It has a touch um, screen. As it has a touch screen. It's got you know all of the right capacity. What we would do, um, you know, in the actual car is use a existing automotive uh, system on chip SOCs. So you know, like a Freescale IMX 6X or TI, um, you know, Jacinto 5 or a 4430 or something like that. Um, so, you know, the, the, the idea really isn't necessarily replacing the, the head unit with a tablet, um, but, but we could do that as well. And there's a lot of challenges around that. That's why we probably wouldn't do it. But we do definitely see that as something you would do in the rear seat. Okay. So what are some of the other features that you can hook up to, to the tablet in this case? <clears throat> Um, so one of the things that we can do is uh, navigation, and this is navigation using a hybrid nav solution. So we're getting all of the data from the cloud um, for the you know updated maps, updated points of interest, uh, updated traffic, and that type of thing. So the, it assumes that the car is connected. Um, the same thing with the, the multimedia. So if we actually go into the, the media, we can pull data off of a cloud storage. So if we want to keep all of our you know, songs on a Dropbox or Box or New Bay or something like that. We can go ahead and play all that um, and uh, access it all off the cloud. Um, so the cloud is great, but if I have a BlackBerry smartphone like the Bold 9900 with NFC technology, can I pair it up with this existing playbook in the dash and play songs and take calls that way? Absolutely. In fact, I'll show you, we, we have a, a real easy one-touch NFC pairing. So you can see that uh, this guy isn't paired right now. And we've got a little spot to set it. So you just dump him in there and he sees that there's a little NFC tag and he automatically negotiates the pairing for it. So the pairing, is it Bluetooth now? Yeah, it's Bluetooth paired now. So so now we've, we've basically got that guy all paired, and we go back to here and we'll, we'll see him show up with... Uh... So not that you need to leave your phone in the center um, holder here. Once, you, you, once you've done that, it's paired and you can, you can do whatever you want. You can stick it. I mean, it, that does tend to be convenient, like if there's like a plug-in charge or something right. like that. Um, but you know the thing about pairing is it, it's it's such a simple thing for technologically adept people like you or me to do. I mean it's not all that hard, but for people like my mom, she can't figure that kind of thing out. And dealers and car companies get all kinds of problems about. Well, I, you know I don't know how to do this. Uh, we were actually at a show last week, and uh, you know I was talking with somebody from Verizon who ended up getting a ticket because she didn't know how to pair her phone to the car. And you know it, it's something just making it simple is really key. Um, going back to the media, that, that's another thing when we're talking about pairing. Um, you know, the other thing that you can do is you can also control the, the other tablets. So the fact that we've got these two rear seat tablets that are playbooks, we can say, uh, let, let's actually start up video in there for, for our kids, you know, in the rear seat. So the kid doesn't have to struggle finding the video. We can actually start the video here, have it play in the rear seat, uh, vice versa. So in this ecosystem, we have this main playbook and then two playbooks each on the head, that rear headrest. That's right. And, and then we also have the instrument cluster as well. So the instrument cluster is part of the whole system. So, um, you know, like turn by turn navigation or like if we're playing, play Bob Marley and the Whalers. It takes a little bit of time. But and you can actually see what's playing right here. Yeah, that's right. It shows you in the instrument cluster because this is hooked up to that. And 
you know, part of the, the point of that is is that we're using, um, again, we're using cloud-based uh, voice recognition, which allows you to get a lot more accuracy than a lot of the built-in nav systems. You know, I was doing testing with this where I could read it like the Gettysburg Address, and, and it gets the whole thing. It, it's really amazing uh, technology. It does take a little bit longer, so, and there are situations where you might always want to have voice recognition, but you're not connected, so you may have like a hybrid solution there as well, where you go to the cloud when you've got connectivity, but you have like a simple onboard system for, for doing some things when you need to. So, so this one playbook is controlling two others in the rear, the center, the, the dash. These guys are basically sharing uh, sharing the information and, and yeah, they've got the ability to independently run but be controlled by by the front. So uh, yeah, it's it's definitely the whole idea is try to integrate everything to, to make it so that the mobile experience that you bring into the car um, really can augment the car and the car can augment the mobiles. So it's really trying to, to you know, bring, I guess, as much of those as closely together as possible. Now, QNX has historically been in cars and in various manufacturers that are well known today. Um, what are some of the instrument clusters? Um, what are some of the OBDs and how are you handling the playbook sure. with the instrument clusters and all that? Sure. So, uh, uh, you know, on the, the, the center stack side, and we're in a ton of different applications. Um, we're probably in about 60% of uh, last year's infotainment systems that shipped. On the instrument cluster side, we're in um, some of the, the big ones that are out there um, right now. There aren't a ton of digital instrument clusters, but like the Jaguar has an instrument cluster that's Kinex based. Uh, Land Rover is Kinex based. Uh, the Ford F-150, which is the most popular selling vehicle in the world, it has a small uh, center information console that's Kinex based. So there's a lot of different little applications for that as well. Some of them are showing you know, either the whole thing or just little pieces of it as well. It kind of depends on the OEM. Now, if I don't want to see what's playing, can I show other things on here? I mean, QNX is flexible enough where you can augment it, shrink it, do whatever you want. That, so that's exactly right. We, we have this so that it shows uh, the turn-by-turn -turn routing as well, um, but I apologize because I can't remember how you actually initiate the route. I think it's uh, navigate to Starbucks. I'll try this out. Right? Updating information I might not get it right. It's doing it here on the playbook. It's doing it here, and I think uh, if we pick one of these, and I apologize that they're they're actually in Dallas instead of New Orleans because uh, this uh, Porsche has been traveling a lot and it hasn't been updated with the maps. So I know on on the on the BlackBerry smartphone, um, turn by turn navigation is done through BlackBerry traffic, is it? And BlackBerry Maps. Um, who does the turn by turn on here? Uh, so we work with a number of vendors. This one is with TCS. So TCS actually does a, a really great implementation of a an HTML5 based uh, hybrid nav. So this is again, um, you know, we're getting that 3D imagery and the rest of that from from the cloud. Um, but there are a couple of other, you know, basically each car maker has their own favorite navigation engine. So we try to work with, you know, work with them individually. So like Electrobit or Telenav or, or whatever else. And I know you guys, well not QNX, but BlackBerry, your parent company, RIM, um, announced a partnership today with TomTom for uh, traffic and navigation. Will that be integrated more on the QNX side as well, or is that still going to be independent? Uh, actually, the underlying data that's coming to feed this system comes from TomTom. Okay. So TomTom has actually kind of been a silent partner in this. TCS is actually doing the mapping and the implementation, but TomTom is providing all the data that's actually driving the system. So certainly, I'm sure there will be more integration and uh, a, a tighter relationship as that goes on. So this is how QNX works, I guess, through the playbook on a Porsche car. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure.